Go ahead and take your Bibles and let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Thinking about what to present, um, I thought I would take maybe a few weeks and just share some verses that have been a particular blessing to me, and uh, maybe they, maybe they will be to you. I don't know. First uh, Peter four eleven has has helped me. Uh, it says this: If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The commentator said, you know, Peter just got so excited, he just had to say amen at that point. <laughs> uh, over the years, this verse has been a, a help to me. When, uh, when I began to preach, I, I felt pretty intimidated. Um, and this verse helped me to see that uh, when I speak, I am the mouth of God. And I don't mean that in a sacrilegious way, and I don't mean that what I say is suddenly becomes God's words, but I can preach the word of God, and uh, God can bless or God cannot bless, but um, my part is, if I speak, I'm to speak and to be very careful uh, to speak what I believe God's word says. And then he, he goes on and talks about ministering as well. Um, in these few verses, I want us to look at verses 7 through 11, which is basically a, a paragraph there. Um, God wants you to open your mouth. He also wants you to open your heart and your home. And those are the three things we're going we're gonna to look at. In, uh, in verse 7, basically, it gives us our motivation. He says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. The end of all things is at hand. Jesus is coming soon. Uh, this is teaching what we believe, the imminent return of Christ. We believe the, the rapture is the next event on God's calendar. And it's it, any time, any moment, uh, the Lord could come and, and call us away. And quite often he talks about the, this idea of Making sure you're, you're right, because you could have a checkup at any, any moment. Uh, like uh, 2 Peter 3, 14, Beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And 1 John has a similar kind of a statement. Uh, you know, the Lord is coming, and our motivation is uh, we need to be right with him. That should cause us to be sober. He uses that word there. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Now, the word sober it means to have a sound mind, to have self-control. It has to do with daily living. You know, sometimes we come up to a crisis and we think, oh, no, you know, what am I going to do? <laughs> well, the key to handling a crisis is daily sober living. It's not suddenly think, it's not coming up against something and deciding then what you're going to do. If you're an athlete, you don't wait for the day of the race to train. You know, you're, you're training, you're training, you're training because you know sooner or later there's going to be a race. Well, in the Christian life, uh, we need to live soberly. We, we can't just say, oh, well, nothing's happening today. You know, the, the more God blesses us, the lazier we get sometimes. Uh, but he says, be sober. Daily, sober Christian living. And, and then the other part of the phrase is watch unto prayer and watch unto prayer. It's interesting, the words sober and watch are very similar in, in the Greek, very similar. Uh, being careful, being calm, and watching should move us to prayer, not to despair. Yeah, as we're watching and, and thinking about Jesus coming and seeing things change, yeah, we don't have to be in despair. We know Jesus is, is coming. It should cause us to be sober, but it should move us to pray. Listen, these, these people are in desperate straits without Christ, and they don't even know it. Now, watching unto prayer means calmly view life with a view to prayer. Uh, our personal walk with the Lord is so important. Um, uh, our motivation is Jesus is coming, and uh, we need to be right with him. We could stand before him at any moment. And then he lays out our, our Christian duty in a hostile world. Uh, we read verse 8. 
Um, above all things, that, that just means first in importance. It's like what he says in, in Ephesians, above all, taking the shield of faith you know, in front of everything else. Number one, above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. So one of the things he says is open your heart. You know, love is, is very important. Now, I can guarantee you, if you love, you'll get hurt. <laughs> the more you invest in someone, the more it hurts if, if, it, uh, you know, if they turn on you. Um, fervent charity. And the word fervent has to do with being stretched out, extended. And what I see from that is you're not waiting for somebody to say, will you love me? You're saying you're extending it to them. You're saying, I want to love you. I want to show you the love of Christ. Um, not dragged out of us. And uh, he says in um, verse 8 there, charity shall cover the multitude of sins. That word cover means to veil, to hinder the knowledge of. Now, it's not saying that we overlook things that, where we should reprove and rebuke and, and so on, but it's just saying love will, will make it, we won't notice the bad things quite so much when, when love is, is, is part of our uh, daily life. We need to open our hearts to each other. We need to have a heart for each other and a sympathy. There's lots of different words we could use. And then he goes on to open your home. Um, use hospitality one to another without grudging. The, the word hospitality actually means love of strangers, but this phrase actually seems to be talking more about amongst Christians. And it's not just talking about having people over to your home. Um, some of you have shown great hospitality in the last few weeks. You've opened your home, some people have stayed there, uh, you know, all kinds of different things. But uh, hospitality, and, and he, he makes a statement there that's kind of like some of the statements he makes about marriage. Without grudging. <laughs> no fair complaining after they leave, all right? <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad they're gone. <laughs> uh, Without grudging, it, it, the word means secret displeasure or, or murmuring. Uh, we need to open our hearts. We need to open our homes. And uh, we need to be involved with, with service. Uh, we need to open our, our mouths is one of the things he, he talks about. But uh, verse 10, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Uh, every Christian has spiritual gift or gifts. Now, how do you receive a gift? Yeah, somebody offers it to you, and you say, oh, thank you very much. Uh, now, the Bible tells us that spiritual gifts are, we're not all going to be the same. Uh, the classic passage, there, there's two main passages. They're both chapter 12, Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12. That'll help you remember where they are. But uh, in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, and you won't find it in 2 Corinthians where I am. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. We're, we're not all going to have the same spiritual gifts. Now, we might. You know, there's, there's a limit. Um, but we receive a gift. God gives it to us. When you get saved, you, you receive the Holy Spirit. We also receive spiritual gifts. Now, what are we to do with it? What does he say there? Minister. That word means be a servant. Uh, we're to use it for others. God gives us spiritual gifts to be a blessing uh, to others. And your ministry, our ministries are not all going to be the same. I mean, theoretically, we could even have the same spiritual gift and have a different ministry. You know, there's lots of things that, that the Lord wants us to do. Um, and, and he says our position is servant, but also steward, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. I like that, that phrase, manifold grace of God. It's varied. God's grace is variegated. You know, it's, it's, it's what you need, God has. Um, temptations are also varied. Uh, he, he says in uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 6, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. Well, listen, God can match that. <laughs> All right? The manifold temptations, God's got manifold grace. Uh, God's got ma ma the manifold grace of God. Um, Spiritual gifts fall into two main categories listed here, speaking gifts and serving gifts. And they often overlap. You know, if you have a speaking gift, people are going to ask you things. And, 
Uh, can you do this or can you do that? Um, some of you might have speaking gifts, but you've never found out because you've refused to use it. That could have been me, you know? I, I hated talking in front of people. Oh, I'm, I'm not good at that. Listen, God didn't say you have to be good. My kids used to hate it when we'd be eating, and they'd say, oh, we don't like this. Said, That's okay. You don't have to like it. Just eat it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's, there's so much that God wants to do with us, and don't let your life be run by fear. Don't make decisions based on fear, unless it's the fear of the Lord. Um, speaking gifts, hey, they're okay. You know, God can, you might think, oh, I, I don't, you know, maybe you don't have that. But it doesn't hurt to give it a go if, if God gives you the opportunity. Um, you know, when, when you're speaking, that, that's why this verse was a help to me. Be the mouth of God. Lord, if you can use a stick, you can use me. <laughs> um, Oracles just means words, the words of God. And when serving, he says there, if you minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. God doesn't expect something out of you that he hasn't given you. And when you're serving the Lord, use whatever ability God has given you. Ability has to do with, with strength, your strengths. You know, in job interviews now, they ask you, what, what are your strengths? That's really, that's kind of a crummy question, isn't it? You know, you know uh, I'm very humble. <laughs> uh, anyway, you can, you can see here God's instructions. Uh, he wants us to practice personal holiness. Uh, he wants us to love. He wants us to serve. And you can also see his intentions. Look at the end of verse 11 there. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. That's God's intentions. It's not about us. It's about the Lord. And, you know, God can, can use us in many, many different, different ways. It's all about the glory of God. In one of the verses that came to my mind is in the next chapter, 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Isn't that a blessing? Uh, God can use us. And uh, you know, as I was uh, preparing this, I thought, well, yeah, there's some needs in our church. There's some things that uh, we need people to, to step in, and some of them would take some preparation. You know, you couldn't necessarily just do it tomorrow. Uh, others wouldn't. Uh, we need people to drive vans. Uh, we need some Sunday school teachers. Uh, we need maintenance on the buildings. You know, there's, there's lots of things. Some of those are, are, of course, more e eternally rewarding than, than others, but uh, uh, there's things that we can do just to, to serve the Lord. Any comments or, or questions before we quit? It's a pretty short message tonight. <laughs>